All right, we're looking now at lesson 1.7, three-dimensional figures, and we're going from polygons to polyhedra. And uh, we're going to be looking at how you can take something that used to be flat and a part of a plane and make it three-dimensional. So without any other further ado, let's get right into it. We began 1.6 talking about curves, which were a, a set of points that weren't necessarily in a straight line. Um, we're going to be beginning our conversation in this lesson by talking at sort of the same idea, but now making it three-dimensional. Instead of a curve being a flat thing that is kind of swooshy, um, surfaces now are three-dimensional. They come off the page. They float in space in front of you, and they are maybe kind of swooshy. And so a, an object that, is, um, that has no depth, has no thickness, but is a set of connected points in space, we call that a surface, okay? So this is a surface. It's a surface because it's a surface, right? And this is a three-dimensional object, and I could wrap it in cellophane or something like that, and the cellophane would represent the surface on this object, but surfaces have no thickness. They are three-dimensional, but they themselves don't have any thickness, okay? So let's move on now from that. A surface can be closed just like a uh, curve can be closed, and that's a surface of finite size that divides space into an interior and an exterior. Again, this object has a finite closed surface. There is an inside to it, and that's where my cold water is, right? Okay. A solid is the union of a closed surface and its interior. So um, a, the, the aluminum skin of this could just be the surface. And, but now if I consider not just the, the, the skin, but also everything inside, the ice, the water, the second layer, the vacuum space, all that stuff, if I consider that all one object, now I have a solid. It's not just this that I'm touching, it goes all the way through, okay? So a surface is just one point thick. Um, a solid is everything inside it, the interior and the surface, okay? A sphere is a very particular, ki very particular type of solid is the set of all points in space that are given distance from the point, the sphere's center. So just like a circle is on a plane, it's flat, and it's everything that's the same distance from this point. Now if I take that exact same idea and I make it three-dimensional, I've got a ball, right? And that's a sphere. A sphere is a set of all the points in space equidistant from a given point, which would be the sphere's center. Um, any segment from the center of the sphere to the uh, to any point on the sphere is the radius of the sphere. So just like a circle has a radius, so does a sphere, right? Your brain is just adding a third dimension to all the things we just talked about. Pretty simple, pretty simple concepts. Radius of a circle, radius of a sphere, same idea. Um, a cone now. A cone is the union of a region and all segments that connect the boundary of the region with a specific non-coplanar point, the vertex. That is maybe the most complicated definition for a fairly simple idea. I have some shape on the bottom. I have some simple closed curve on the bottom. In this case, it's a circle, but it needn't be. Some simple closed region um, in a plane. And this is one plane. And then I take some, ooh, I take some non-coplanar point. In this case, it's right here. And I connect that non-coplanar point with the region on the plane with a surface. Now I have a cone. Okay, this is a round cone. Everybody has heard of round cones like the dunce cap, right, or the ice cream cone. But cones don't have to have a round bottom. Cones can have any shape they want on the bottom. It can be a polygon, it can be a swooshy curve, it can be anything. But whatever shape this is, whatever, whatever closed simple curve this is. We pick some point in space and we connect that point to every other point on the on the curve and we have a cone. Okay, we'll see lots of non-circular cones in this lesson. Um, the cone's base is the region in the plane bounded by the simple closed curve. So in this example it's this circle down here, but again it doesn't need to be a circle, but this would be the base. Okay, um, and then the line segments connecting each point to the curve form the lateral surface. So all of this area here is the lateral surface. So the surface area of a cone is the lateral surface plus the base. Okay, that would be all of the stuff it takes to wrap up this cone. Um, similarly, a cylinder 
okay? A cylinder is the union of two regions of the same size and shape in different parallel planes. So here I have a circle up here, and there's another circle down here on the bottom. So there's this plane and then a parallel plane, and they both have a circle. And then I connect every point in this circle with every point in this circle. And I wind up having basically what looks like a tin can, okay? It's region, region, and all the points connecting them. Um, and so this is a, a cylinder. Now, again, this is drawn with a circle as the base, but the base needn't be a circle. It can be squares, triangles, polygons of any kind, okay? As long as the two sides in the, in the, um, in the two parallel planes are the same region, they're congruent regions, right? Then you have a cylinder. Each of the two regions we call a base. So a cone only has one base, a cylinder has two bases, okay? And then the lateral surface um, is all of the connecting area that connects the two bases. All right, a pyramid is very much like a cone, but it's a cone that has actually, it is a cone. It's just a cone that has a polygon as the base. So here's a pyramid, a cone with a polygon base, we call a pyramid. So this happens to have a square base and then the point in space up here and every point is, uh, is connected to this point up here in space. So it's, it is a cone. But the cone doesn't have a circular base, it has a square base, so we call it a pyramid. Just like that, a prism is a cylinder that has polygonal regions as its bases. So the last uh, cylinder I showed you had circles, like a can. This doesn't. This has uh, rhombuses, so it's more like a die than like a can. Um, and so it has a, a rhombus base and another rhombus base, and then all the lines connecting the points um, this would be the lateral area in here, and this is base one and base two. So pyramids and prisms are cones and circles. It's just that they have polygons for bases instead of circles. Okay. Um, if the segments forming the lateral surface of a prism are, or cylinder are perpendicular to the base, then we call it a right prism or a right cone or a right cylinder. So this is not a right cylinder. This is not a 90 degree angle. Neither is this. But um, this, the point, is directly over the center. And you know, I could drop a straight line down and be in the middle of this square. So um, this is, in fact, a right pyramid. Okay, This is not a right cylinder. If it's not right, we call it oblique. Oblique is the word that means not straight up and down, slanty in some way. Okay, uh, a pyramid or a prism is regular if it's if it is right, and if its base is a regular polygon. So um, I don't know if this is a regular square. It doesn't look like it is. So this is not regular. But if this were a square, then this would be a regular square pyramid. Okay. So if you have a regular uh, polygon, then it's a a regular pyramid or a regular prism. Okay. Alrighty, we're getting there. The lateral surfaces of a pyramid consist of triangular regions, each being a lateral face. So in a cone, we have the lateral area, um, and in a pyramid, we have lateral faces because they're bounded by, by edges and their shapes. It's not just some uh, you know, curvy region. Okay, So this pyramid has a face, MDN, which is a triangle and another one NDO, another one ODL, and LDM, okay? And so those are all faces of the pyramid. Its base would be down here, the, the rectangle. The segment formed by the intersection of two lateral faces is a lateral edge. So MD, DN, DO, DL, those are all lateral edges. They form the union of two faces. It's the the segment that forms the boundary there, right? Alrighty, let's do some examples. Use the right square pyramid to name the following. Let's name its vertex. Where do you think the vertex is? Yes, it's point D, okay? The vertex up here is the, uh, the point in space that all of the edges are connected to. Uh, its base, what's its base? That would be the rectangle down here, LMNO. Okay. 
And the lateral face would be all of these triangles, MDN, NDO, ODL, and LDM. And a lateral edge would be DM, DN, DO, or DO, all of those segments that form the lines of the pyramid's edge, right? Okay, if you have any questions, go back and look over the last couple of uh, slides and hopefully it'll help clear it up. Let's go ahead and forge on. Now we can also have three-dimensional shapes that don't have just two parallel bases, but actually have lots of parallel bases. And that would be called a polyhedron. A polyhedron is a closed surface made up of polygonal regions. Every polygonal region forms the surf forming the surface is a face of the polyhedron. No such thing as bases anymore, because you could set a polyhedron on any of its faces and say that's the base, but it's that would just depend on its orientation and space. All of the faces are equally important, and they all form part of the boundary of this polyhedron. Okay, and so we'll show you some examples of those here in just a moment. We name them very much like we name polygons. We name them with the Greek prefix for how many faces they have, and then edron at the, uh, at the end, or hedron at the end. So tetra means four, hedron, this is a four-faced three-dimensional figure. Pentahedron, five, six, etc. Isocahedron is a fun one to say, um, and that's, uh, that's 20 faces, okay? Of course there are more, but um, in our class, I think the highest we're going to go is a 20-faced object. Any of you that uh, play games that need to have different kinds of die, lots of role-playing games, um, you'll, you'll be more familiar with polyhedron, a four-sided die, a six-sided die, an eight-sided die, a 12-sided die, a 20-sided die. Um, so you can think of those objects as uh, examples of good polyhedrons. All right. Here's some figures. Now, are they polyhedrons? Or, or are they cones or cylinders? Okay, so this, um, this is a polyhedron because it has, it's a solid three-dimensional object, right? Um, and it has four sides. It has this one on the bottom, and then one, two, three more. It has four sides. So that's a tetrahedron, and it is, um, it is a pyramid, right? because we could call this one the base and we could call this the vertex. And so this is a tetrahedron. It's also a triangular pyramid, okay? Um, I don't know the way it's drawn, if it's regular or not. Um, this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sided figure. This is an octohedron and it is uh, not a prism and it is not a pyramid. As a matter of fact, it's like two pyramids with their butts glued together. Okay, um, so this is just an octohedron. It has eight triangular faces. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six sided figure. This is a hexahedron. This is also a cube. Um, this is also a square prism. Okay, so we could talk about a lot of things. It's regular. All the sides look like they're drawn to be equal. Um, so this is a regular cube or a regular uh, hexahedron. Here we have uh, a, a figure that has one, two, three, four, five, and then the base, six sides. So it is a hexahedron, but it is not a regular hexahedron. This is also a pentagonal pyramid, right? Because the base is a pentagon, and then we have a vertex up here. Um, so there will be five triangles that form the lateral faces, and then a base of a pentagon. This is a right pentagonal pyramid. And this has a whole bunch of faces. Um, I think, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, yes. This is an isocahedron, um, and so every face on an is this is a regular isocahedron. They're all equilateral triangles, okay? And this isocahedron has 20 sides. It's not a prism. It's not a pyramid. It's just a regular isocahedron. Already? All right, we're nearly there. Um, in a polyhedron, the intersection of adjacent faces is an edge, just like in a pyramid, okay? And the end points of the edges are vertices, just like in a pyramid. So pyramids and polyhedrons have a lot of the same terminology. We're still talking about edges 
endpoints are vertices. Regular polyhedrons is a convex polyhedron whose faces are all identical regular polygons with the same number of edges meeting at each vertex. Okay, so there are uh, lots of examples of regular polyhedrons, a skew, a, a cube, or something of that nature. Here's some. Um, a regular tetrahedron has four equilateral triangles. A regular octahedron has eight equilateral triangles. A regular dodecahedron has 12 regular pentagons. A regular isocahedron has 20 regular equilateral triangles. And then, of course, a cube or a regular hexa hexahedron has six regular uh, squares, six regular quadrilaterals. Okay? Um, I think that does it. Yes, it does. If you have any questions, let me know tomorrow when I see you in class, and I'll be happy to answer them. And until then, God bless you, and Jesus loves you, and so do I.